Yeah! Well, we're here today <laughs> with an interesting character. Introduce yourself, Josh. <laughs> well, I'm the notorious Humble Pie, a.k.a. No Luck, a.k.a. about a thousand other screen names. That Famous from TTI. I am uh, infamous. You, ma you made a lot of friends on there, have you? I made quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> quite a few. Well, uh, Josh decided to pull in here to Oak Grove. It's about 90 degrees in the middle of May, and he's loaded with the, what do you got on here? Ah, uh, it's HC80 crane. Okay. It's an uh, 80 ton crane is what it is. 80. Picks up 80 ton. Will pick up 80 ton. And yep. what's your, uh, how heavy are you right now? I'm 143 and some change. Might as well call it 144. So the machine's pushing 90,000. Okay. Is what it's pushing. Of course, it's missing counterweights and boom sections and all that. Put together, I think the machine's about 160,000. Damn. Once it's built. Okay. So, so yeah, she's a, I don't know, I would say she's a big girl. She's big for me, but she's small compared to a lot of them. Right. So. Taking it to? Uh, Richmond, Virginia. So weight permits all the way? Yep, permits yeah. all the way. Uh, most of the way. Most of the way. <laughs> Depending on how you feel. Depending on how the states feel. Yeah. So, yep, yep. She's heavy weighted all the way. Okay. So. What'd you want to be as a kid? Truck driver. Really? Yep, yep, yep. Daddy, uh, daddy drove a truck, so I'm second generation. Um, I guess he started driving when, I don't know, I was about four years old. And so, you know, when you're four years old, you know, big trucks are, are just, cool. yeah, they're cool. They're fascinating. So, yeah. I wanted to drive, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, went to school uh, to be a truck mechanic, you know, went to tech college for that, because, uh, you know, 17, 18 years old, they're not gonna let you drive, so you gotta do something. Yep. So, uh, went to school to do that. As soon as I turned 21, man, I went to uh, went to looking for a job to go drive a truck. So, here I am, ever well, since. When was the first, first truck driving job? First job? <laughs> you son of a gun. <laughs> I worked for Chester Rodney for about 90 days. Now, not a lot of people know Chester Rodney as Chester Rodney. It's, it's well, usually it's, something... It's the Mormon Mafia. Um, <laughs> yeah, with it, they're a Salt Lake City, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they're... they're uh, oh, C.R. England. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, man, I tell you what, you digging, ain't you? <laughs> well, there's no shame in that. You're, you're giving all my enemies we, uh, some little <laughs> ammunition here. We all got to start somewhere. How long did that last? Uh, 30 or 90 days, three uh, months. I don't blame you. Three months, that, that's how long it took for me to figure out this wasn't the outfit this, for me. This wasn't gonna, <laughs> I, gonna work out. I, uh, I don't know, I was out in Denver and they wanted me to uh, load a load of beef going to Miami. And I'd been with them 90 days and I hadn't been home the whole 90 days. I mean, I, I hadn't seen the house in three months. Wasn't making no money. You know, I mean, as a matter of fact, hell, going in the hole, you know, there was, back then, you didn't have, you know, we didn't have easy pass and all that, so the driver would take cash advance, pay the toll, put it in trip, you Reimburse. know, put the receipts yep. in the, yeah, I remember the, that. the trip envelope, mail it in, you know, yep. put it in trip pack or wherever. Well, they were running me back and forth across the PA turnpike, and if anybody's been out here any time, you know, it's an yeah, arm wrecks. and a leg to run yep. that. Well. They lost some trip reports, and so therefore they conveniently lost a bunch of receipts for the PA Turnpike. And so, you know, I mean, I was getting checks where I was in the hole, wanted to go home, newly married, you know, I mean, I, I'd been married uh, a little over a year, and, uh, and uh, wanted me to go to Miami. And I said, well, I can pick it up. I said that uh, Greenville, South Carolina is where I'm going, you know, we can, Repower, reload, whatever you need to do. I mean, the company's big as you guys are. You can figure that out. No, we can't do that. You got to go to Miami. So I said, well, your truck can go wherever the hell you want it to. Your driver's going to Greenville. <laughs> I hung the phone up, and I, hell, at that time I was just, you know, running my mouth. But uh, really, yeah, I did. Well, you know, I mean, I, I knew I was going home. I just didn't know how. I was no, going I mean, home. I mean, you running your mouth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You, can, you can bleep that out, right? Just, yeah, I can take that out. Okay, yeah, bleep all that out. <laughs> so you know, I went to the truck, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew this wasn't working, and 
turned the radio on, CB radio on, and there was old boy on there wanting somebody to run with him to Taylor's, South Carolina, which if anybody's any familiar with the area, you know, you got Greenville Taylor's, they're right there together. Mm -hmm. So I hollered at him, I said, well, I can't run with you, I said, but I sure could use a ride. And the old boy was actually already on the interstate. He turned around and he come back and got me and I threw the stuff in his truck and down the road I went. So I don't know, maybe that truck's still sitting there. It's uh, <laughs> sitting in Denver. It's at the Sap Brothers there, you know, the one that's got the uh, the big, uh, the dirty bookstore in the parking lot. I, I guess the dirty bookstore's still there. But, uh, <laughs> It's right over there, so uh, if yes, anybody needs, needs it, a CR England. Yeah, if thing. anybody needs it, there's a Freightliner Classic that was sitting there. What so. year Freightliner Classic? Uh, it was a uh, '98 or something like that. Oh, that'd be about 150 grand's worth now, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, they're worth a little money right now, you know. Uh, them boys uh, that haul containers love them things, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I left there and then uh, come back home and uh, went back to work as a mechanic for a little while. Uh, no, I take that back. I think from there I went and I was hauling fuel for local uh, grading outfit, construction outfit. Filling the um, Filling the machines, on. yeah. I was a, the fuel and grease monkey. I'd go around in the middle of the night because, you know, they don't want to do it during the day. Nope. Because, you know, you got to run the machines. So in the middle of the night, I had to go out, fuel everything up, grease it, get it ready for the next day. And uh, that was a miserable job, mainly because you got to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning every day, you know. And right. That gets old, so left there, went to uh, U.S. Express, worked for them for about a year, and they were a decent company, you know, for a mega, somebody, you know, didn't have any experience and, and all that. They, they, they wasn't bad, but of course, they're like any other mega, you're not getting rich, you know, and at that time, four or five hundred dollars a week is all you was making, you know. Right. And uh, I wound up uh, leaving there, went back to mechanicking for a while. Then I got on with a, uh, a local lumber distributor outfit, doing multi-stop uh, lumber loads local. And that was a good deal. I worked there for, I don't know, just shy of two years. And then uh, went to work at a chemical company. and. Uh, chemical company didn't have but two trucks and uh, really that's uh, that's why I learned how to deal with brokers and stuff like that because it was either with just two trucks and really they were just moving their own stuff so you know they're moving you know they had a load three days a week two days a week you didn't have nothing to do yep so if you wasn't driving you had to go in the plant and work well you know that's too much like work so uh, <laughs> I talked them into letting me, you know, find some broker loads and stuff like that. And work the trucks a little more. Work, work the trucks a little more, because they were leasing brand new trucks, you know. I mean, that's what they had was, was brand new Kenworths. And I guess that was uh, 03, 04 when I went there. And uh, yeah, it was about 04. And uh, so, you know, I worked with them a while, learned how to deal with brokers and all that. And uh, that's uh, when I had my accident. And so, uh, worked for another year after my accident. They were good to me and uh, finished their lease up. They had three year lease on the trucks and they were getting out of the truck and once those street. leases were up. So when they did, I started Lifeline with uh, help from my dad. Okay. Uh, what was the accident you had? It was uh, 2006. I had a uh, fatality accident uh, down in Georgia. Uh, Conyers, Georgia, and uh, I don't know, you know, it, uh, like any other 26-year-old, you know, well, I won't say any of them, but a lot of 26-year-olds, you know, I was full of piss and vinegar, you know, I mean, hell, I'm going to be an outlaw and do this, do that, you know, and run 1,000-mile days, you know, 1,200-mile days, and, uh, but anyways, I'd been up, uh, picked up a load up while back. This short, all my permits are here. You're ready to go. I'm ready to roll. You're man. ready to R O L L. All right, well, let's see what kind of route they give me. 435.70, exit 
Uh, yeah, 63 to 50, 50 to 44, to 44. 270, 255. That'd um, be a fun little route one. Yeah, <laughs> not a fan of that one. That'll be a fun little route. Uh, we're halfway through the accident story. Alrighty, uh, yeah. Uh, full of piss and vinegar at about 26 years old. Full of piss and vinegar at 26, you know, I mean, hell, gonna, you know, super trucker, outlaw, you know. Uh, anyways, loaded up in uh, Wabash, Indiana. Up all day, up all night. Got down to Georgia and uh, unloaded, went to go reload and uh, run a red light. The witnesses say I run a red light. I, I don't know. Okay. You know, so, but run a red light. A uh, woman was, uh, she was a 63 year old woman. Just bought her a brand new Corvette convertible. I mean, it was brand new. And uh, she, I don't know, she hit me right at the steer tire, busted, you know, all the suspension, steering parts, draggling, all that, busted it off. Uh, hell, the, uh, even busted the steer tire off. The steer tire wound up on the, uh, it bounced all the way over and wound up on the passenger side on the ground. Um, Did they ever estimate how fast she was going? Yeah. Uh, I was doing, they estimated me at doing 45 and a 50. Yep. Because like I said, I was coming up on the intersection and I knew I was getting close to my pickup, and uh, which they were just past the intersection. But I was looking at my, my directions on the notepad when I come through the intersection. They estimated me at doing 45 and they estimated her at doing about 55 okay. and a 50. So she was a little over the speed over limit, I was a little under. under. Um, so really, it wasn't a speed involved deal. It was just, uh, you know, size. You know, what I mean, you know, you run a, a Corvette, and you got the top down and everything. And I think, I think when some of them parts got knocked off, you know, whether it was the drag link or the steer tire, I think that's what killed her. I think something could, something Open hit her. Top, it yeah. hit her in the head. Right. And I'll. I'll and like I said, she was open top. I mean, and hell, it knocked her hood off. It, uh, she hit so hard, it knocked the outer door skin off. Her door, her driver's oh, wow. side door, the outer door skin come off. Oh, uh, oh, the, the engine caught on fire. Hell, I had to get out, get my fire extinguisher, put it out. Uh, but I think something, something hit her. She didn't die immediately. Uh, they flew the helicopters in and uh, flew her into Atlanta, and she died later at the hospital. Right. Uh, but it was a bad deal, you know. I mean, it uh, as crass as this sounds, I think uh, I thank God it wasn't a kid, you know. I thank God that it wasn't an 18 year old kid or a, a you know 24 year old mother of a kid. You yeah. Know what I mean. It's sad enough to say, you know, it's a 68-year-old grandmother, you know, but still, you know, like I said, I don't want to discount her life or the meaning of her life. I'm just glad it wasn't, you know, somebody that had their whole life, life ahead, ahead of them. But, uh, so yeah, insurance company settled. Oh, uh, just shy of $2 million. And, uh, they were supposed to not press charges, but they talked the DA into pressing charges. And so there was criminal charges went into it. Um, got probation. Uh, got uh, community service. And uh, lost my driving privileges for a year. So uh, Georgia, the DA was good with just me not driving a Class A vehicle. South Carolina, Georgia charged me with uh, misdemeanor homicide by vehicle, second degree. South Carolina doesn't have that charge. All they have is homicide by vehicle. So, which is the equivalent to a drunk driver or something like that. So when Georgia sent the criminal stuff, you know, to South Carolina for my driving record, South Carolina 
suspended my license for a year period across period. the board. Everything. Everything. Um, and uh, so, you know, I had to uh, go in the office, uh, which I mean, you know, we started Lifeline before the criminal stuff, but we kind of knew, I knew I couldn't get a job driving a truck nowhere. Right. The only way I could get a job driving is if I went out on my own. And surprisingly enough, the insurance company that first insured me was the one that I was with when I had my accident. So, I mean, oh, they're really? the, yeah, they're the ones that knew about the accident. I mean, they're the ones that, that paid the settlement and everything. Wow. Okay. But, uh, but they are the ones that I got started with. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I was, uh, since Georgia didn't want me driving a Class A, I went and bought a little six-wheeler expedite truck and was running the uh, auto freight. And then South Carolina, they kind of shafted me there. Um, took away all my license. So, so you couldn't drive the six-wheeler. So I couldn't drive the six-wheeler. And uh, so I hired a guy to run it and had to add on some more trucks because, hell, I can't make a living off of just one six-wheeler and me dispatching just one six-wheeler. So went way into debt. Bought shit on credit cards, bought trucks on credit cards. I mean, everything that you shouldn't do. The absolute wrong way to go into business. Absolute wrong way. I did it. Uh, but I was determined not to lose either. Uh, I mean, I was determined to make it. But it was hard. And... Uh, so it can be done. I just wouldn't suggest everybody doing it. You know, I mean, everybody says, "Oh, you shouldn't drive. You shouldn't become owner operator until you have a cash reserves and this, that, and the other." And they're right. I'm not going to say they're it wrong. Makes it easier starting with it with some capital. There's a whole lot less chance of failure. Yep. You know. Oh. Uh, but I didn't have an option. And I didn't have the option, the luxury of failing either, you know. I mean, this was, I had to work, I had to feed the kids, kids and yeah. all that, you know. So, you know, I had to, I had to make it go. Uh, and uh, so I did my year in purgatory. I dispatched trucks for a year. And you had the three owner operators and four company drivers? I had, uh, no, I had, I had eight total. And I had, well, at one point in time there, I got to 10, but that didn't last long. So it's really not worth mentioning. <laughs> but I had eight and uh, five company trucks, three owner operators okay. is what I had. Uh, and then uh, I wound up selling one of my trucks to really my best driver, uh, more of a lease purchase type deal. You know, I just let him make payments on it, but I didn't, it wasn't a lease purchase like, you know, all these yeah. other lease purchases. I told him, look, I think I sold him the truck for $12,000. I said, here's what I'm going to pay you. You know, I was paying him percentage and, uh, hell, I paid him like 85% and, uh, and then I charged him instead of weekly, you know, monthly. It was five, six hundred dollars a month, something like that, until he had the truck paid off. Until I had my twelve thousand dollars, and then I gave him the title. You know right. What I mean, that's kind of the way that deal worked out. Um, he was a good guy, just shit when it come to maintenance. So he wouldn't do maintenance for <laughs> nothing. You know. And Let me check this again. He's got me paranoid now. Just fine. He kept getting uh, tickets and shit for maintenance running up my CSA score, and uh, so I finally, I said, man, I, I love you. But I gotta leave you. You know, I hate to do it, but, you know, we got to part ways, man. I can't keep you, you know. So, yeah, and then, you know, little by little, I